Hello, hello, hello everyone. Another Wednesday, another Biz Chats. And today I'm super excited to kick off 2018 with Clinton, co-founder and COO of Influenza. Um, Influenza is a media outlet that attracts millions of readers every month. Um, he's held top roles in partnerships, sales, marketing, at various funded startups. Uh, where he worked with private, public, and Fortune 100 companies. He's also a former financial advisor and a two-time member of the G20 Young Entrepreneurs Alliance, representing Canada. So I'm very, very excited to talk about today's, um, today's topic with him, the, the power of partnerships. And I'm going to add him right now to, uh, to this chat. Hey, Clinton, how are you? Good, man. How are you doing? Good. Can't complain. A new year. I'm all excited. <laughs> yeah, that's right on. Uh, thanks again for, uh, for having me. I hope, uh, hope the holidays were, uh, were solid for you and, and everything was awesome over, over the break. Absolutely. I hope, the, I hope the same for you. Yeah, no, it was awesome. It was good to just kind of disconnect a little bit and get away and, and um, yeah, just obviously spend time with uh, friends, family, all, the, all that type of stuff and, and kind of get away from the business stuff for a little bit, right? Of course. It gives everyone an opportunity to regroup and move forward even stronger, right? So that's exactly. great. So I, yeah. did, I did do a little intro uh, on your bio right now, uh, letting everyone okay. know that we're talking about the power of partnership, which you have a ton of experience with. So yeah. um, to respect your time, I'm going to get right into it uh, as sure. far as having, you know, 10 questions I'd like to ask you. So um, out the gate, why should business owners work together rather than by themselves? Yeah, honestly, I think it's a good it's a good way to kind of start this whole off because um, I know when I got into entrepreneurship like three, four years ago, um, and I think a lot of small business owners even nowadays, you think, hey, I'm going to start a business and you're like in this business by yourself. Um, you're the only one in it. Nobody knows what you're doing or no one knows or understands your business better than you. You don't want to let other people handle different tasks. Um, you just kind of take everything on yourself because essentially it's your baby, right? And um, one thing that I've just really realized is um, there's so much benefits that can happen to a business um, when you partner um, w with others. And I think um, there's, there, it's just a reality, right? Um, there's things that you're really good at and there's things that I'm really good at. But rather than you tackling those things that, you know, maybe you're like 50% at or 30% um, at, um, you just hand them off to me, which I'm a lot better than you at. And I think that that's just the power of partnerships really is when we can bring different skill sets to the table and we can and bring, um, you know, just different concentrations on stuff. I think there's a lot of power that can be made. And I think um, you just got to look at all the great, the great leaders out there, all the great businesses, um, you know, the Apples and the Facebooks and the Googles, right? They were never just created by one leader. Um, it wasn't just one person that decided, hey, I'm going to do this. It's, you know, there's a couple people that put their heads together. They focused on different areas. And I think that's how businesses and business owners should approach partnerships is, you know, how can I, you know, partner with this, you know, other company within my industry? How can we benefit each other? How can, um, instead of looking at others as competitors, how can we look at others as partners and how can we work together? Because the reality is there, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. There's a lot of people in the world. There's a lot of businesses. There's a lot of customers. And there's honestly a lot of room for a lot of people. Um, so, you know, just if you have that mindset of like, hey, how can I partner with others? How can we collaborate rather than, oh, they're my competitor or, oh, I just got to do everything myself. I think you can really accomplish a lot more in life. Yeah, and you put it perfectly. I agree with you. I think when, when, when someone, you know, is self-aware of their strengths and weaknesses in order yep. to fill in those gaps and understand, you know, potentially we are stronger together than in totally. silos, I think, yep. you know, powerful and valuable things happen. So uh, that's yep. great. Um, next question here. Why is it important to add team members to your business? So partnerships, one thing, you know, now, totally. now let's talk about from a, a team perspective, right? Yeah, I think that that's a great question. Honestly, I think it, I've already kind of touched on it a little bit, but I think yeah. when it comes to uh, running a business, 
Um, you need to have a team. You need to realize that it's not just about you. You need to bring others in that uh, will will complement your skill set and and bring different um, you know different avenues to the table that you're better at um, and and perhaps they're better at and and that's something that you know I can even draw on with Influenza and everything that we've done before is um, Brian and I make a really solid team because we bring different skill sets to the table. There's different things that. Um, yeah, we do agree on a lot of the similar things and, and we have a vision of what we want to build our brand into and everything that we're building. But there's certain things that he's better at and there's certain things that I'm better at. And I think that's what really, really important is when you're building a team is, is I, I think you should be focusing on bringing people in that can complement things. But you should also like... I think some people, right, is just being self-aware, as you just said, is super important. But I think another thing that um, business owners or entrepreneurs kind of stray away from sometimes is, you know, they get intimidated by maybe someone else that is smarter than them or maybe that's someone that knows more about something than they do. And uh, honestly, you should be hiring those people. You should be bringing those people into your team because you need to surround yourself with smart people. Um, so that's where I think it's really important to to bring people onto your team that um, bring different areas and that aren't similar to you. And but you have to obviously have that company culture. You got to have that still that that same mindset um, that you both are building something, or you you know four or five of you are building things. So I think just having the super Instagram booted me out. No problem. The beauty of it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, essentially, basically what I was saying is it's so important to surround yourself with the right team, right? It's, yeah. it's super, super important. And you got to have people that bring different skill sets. And I'm sure you have experience with that, with the things that you've done and, and everything that you're doing right now. Yeah. Correct? And I, yeah, and I was going to, you know, I was going to touch on it lightly, but I think, you know, you're right. There's, there's that person or set of people that set the tone and the culture of the, of the company. But it, it once again, goes back to self-awareness. Like when I started Vizon, I knew that, you know, I was good at time management, project management, you know, executing, um, you know, campaigns or, or identifying a business idea and, and bringing it to real life. But for, for, right. for an online marketplace, I, I'm not a programmer. I'm not a CTO right. or a coder. So I, you know, I was aware of that and I brought in the smartest people that know how to do that and made them part of my team. Right. Um, right. It's beautiful because at the end of the day, uh, there's even a quote, you know, if you're the smartest person at the table, you know, you got to switch that up. Right. So always work totally. with, with, the, with the smartest people in, in your space. Um, but the totally. next next question here, do you know of ways that can make it easier for people or businesses to be open to partnerships? Yeah, I think so. So one way I think is to be open to partnerships is, is really um, and, and this is honestly probably the easiest when it comes to a business um, or an entrepreneur is is having the mindset of, hey, I want to collaborate. I want to find ways to partner. Something that I've just found that I have a knack for is when I'm building a business, working with a business, whatever it is. I have this knack of just finding ways that, hey, we're doing this or we're doing that oh, here's this other company. Oh, what if we did this together? Or what if we collaborated and did this event? Or what if we put this product together? What if we collaborated on a service? Whatever it is. And um, I think it's super, super important that um, it's it's really that mindset thing is, is, is a business owner, as a leader, is if you have that mindset of like, okay, I want to collaborate with others. I want to find ways that we can partner. That's kind of the first step. And then the other step would be, you know, the, everyone's kind of heard it before or whatever, and I'm not really a part of them too, too much, but I think obviously networking is super important and there's many different ways that you can network um, and meet other people within your industries, whether it's different associations, whether it's different alliances, um, whatever it is, um, different conferences, events, everything that you go to, rather than seeing everyone as, oh, they're a competitor in my space or we're doing the same business, it's maybe there's a strength that they have and there's a strength that you have. And if you guys put both of your businesses together or both of your strengths together, you could do something amazing rather than both of you doing something like, eh, so-so. So, so. so exactly. I think it's just really starting, starting with that mindset I think is important that, hey, yeah. I wanna collaborate. And then there's obviously all these other different ways of like networking and just getting yourself out there and, and, and just really finding ways to collaborate. Agree. That's great. Now, if you could provide a tip on how to land that new partner, what would it be? If 
To land a partnership, honestly, I think the biggest thing is you need to come to the table with something to offer. You need to have something to offer. Like, what can you offer? Like, what, why would I want to partner with you? Like, you need to show me value first. So if I'm the one that's, I'm proposing, hey, I'm putting on this event and I want to partner with X company because, you know, they're in the same industry as me and they have like a really great audience and I want to get access to them. Okay. So if you're going to go to them and say, hey, we're going to partner together. Well, why should I partner with you? What have you done? What are you currently doing? What is the value to me? What am I going to get out of it? If you come to the table with all of that, it's, it's really going to put you in a better place. You're, you're really already going to be a step ahead and that's going to set you apart from all the other businesses, all the other people that are trying to, um, you know, maybe collaborate or partner with them instead. So I think really um, being prepared and coming to the table with an offer and being someone of value, show value first before asking for stuff, right? Be someone of value. And if you bring things to the table first and you offer something, you know, I can see that being a lot more fruitful for you in the long run rather than, hey, just focusing on, hey, I want to do something with you because you're cool or you guys are doing something awesome and you have a great audience, right? Yeah. And I think even when you're starting out as an entrepreneur or even a small business owner and you're looking to land that partner that's obviously bigger than you, mm -hmm. bring more value to them than they're going to give you back. Even if that's just to land that partnership initially and then nurture that relationship and strengthen that relationship, right? So totally. So that's that's good. Totally. Now, have you ever landed any partnerships before? I probably know the answer. Yes, I've <laughs> Yeah, I've landed <laughs> I've landed definitely lots of partnerships, whether it has to deal with um, you know, some of the businesses and the ventures that I'm involved with right now. Um, I actually do have a partnerships role right now with a company called ship chain. I've, um, seen, that, I've, I've seen that. That's cool. Yes. That's so cool. I'm the VP of partnerships at ship chain right now. Um, basically we're building a track and trace platform on the blockchain, um, nice. across the entire supply chain, basically from point A to point B being able to track and trace your product. So um, it's an industry that's decades old. They still use paper logs. There's so many, um, there's just so many problems. And essentially, um, yeah, we've really assembled a, a, a really rock star team and, and put our heads together and um, put together this amazing concept and things are going really, really well so far. So um, so yeah, essentially what my, my role is, is I'm talking and networking and finding ways to collaborate with other businesses in the industry. Um, I don't, we, we want to build an ecosystem that others can come into and that want to be a part of and to use um, the, the simplicity and everything of our platform. That's what we want. Um, it's not about, hey, we're going to absolutely annihilate your business and take you out. It's more of, hey, like, how can we support you and your business already? So that's um, really what my role is right now. But on top of that, yeah, everything, everything I've done with Influensive, um, everything that I'm still doing with Influensive is, you know, very partnership driven. I want to I wanna collaborate with other brands, with other entrepreneurs, other business owners that are doing things that I can see helping advance, um, you know, everything that we're doing at Influensive or ShipChain, but then the same thing that I know that what we have and what we can offer them is something of value to them and they want to partner and they want to collaborate and we can do some big things together because as you already said, um, it's all about surrounding yourself with the right people and I want to surround ourselves, no matter what business or venture I'm in, um, with the right organizations, with the right people leading them that believe in partnerships and believe in collaborating so we can do some some awesome things. That's great. And where can people go to learn more about uh, ship, uh, ship Chain? Um, ship Chain, uh, it, honestly, the easiest thing is probably just our website, um, shipchain.io. Uh, okay. Pretty simple, www.shipchain.io. But um, uh, other than that, um, we're all obviously across uh, social media too. We have a very, very active Telegram group. We're almost at like 3,000 members right now. Nice. Um, it's growing growing like wildfire, but um, really, really excited about that and, and that project just because we've been getting a lot of industry validation from people that have been in the industry for 20, 30 years, have these, you know, family businesses, and essentially they've been growing into these family businesses, and yeah, nothing's changed. Yeah. Um, nothing's really changed, and so when they see us and what we want to do in our vision and they see our roadmap and how we want to do it, people are starting to really get it. And when you can get validation from people that are in that industry day in and day out, um, that really puts you um, kind of a step ahead and it really creates validation for all of us and everything that we've put into it 
Um, so we're, we're super, super excited about it. But um, of course, anyone too, if they ever wanted to reach out to me personally or, or anything like that, that's another great way to, to just kind of stay, stay in touch with everything that we're doing with ShipChain too. Perfect, perfect. Thank you. So this does yeah. bring us halfway. I have another five questions for you, but I just wanted to Let's remind everyone that today's segment, we are recording it. We're going to put it up on YouTube. So if, if somebody doesn't have a chance to watch it now, they can watch it on demand. Uh, and once again, this is in partnership with Influenza. Uh, if you want to check out what they do and all their resources, I'm a follower. I'm a fan. I read their stuff every day. Uh, simply go to Influenza.com. Um, now with the next question, uh, in your opinion, do you think there's certain businesses or industries that benefit more from partnerships than than others, or do all or can all businesses and industries benefit from from partnerships? Oh, that's a, no, no, that's that's a good question, honestly, because um, I I don't know, like I, I I've kind of like I touched on before, it's like how can you. Um, what's the best way to partner, you know, as a business owner, as a small business owner, and it's like. I think honestly, it's really a mindset thing is if you have that mindset of like, how can I collaborate? How can I work together with others and other business owners? And so we can accomplish bigger things, then um, I think it's really kind of a universal thing. I think it doesn't matter the industry, it doesn't matter the business, but um, also on top of that, I think there's definitely, um, you know, maybe some areas that are maybe more favorable, but let's just take, you know, let, let, let's talk about a couple examples. Um, you know, let, let's take doctors, for example. Um, why can't, say, doctors, dentists, chiropractors, why can't they work together and collaborate, um, you know, rather than saying, oh, no, um, don't go to this dental office or don't go to this doctor because I want their business, I want their clients. Think of how can we collaborate? What are they really good at? Or maybe they specialize in something that we don't do. So when we have a client that comes to us, and says, oh, I need X, Y, Z done. Well, no, actually, sorry, I'm not specialized in that or I don't do that, but I have an amazing company that I'm gonna refer you to. I have an amazing company I'm gonna, um, that we're partners with, that we refer all of our clients to, and so on and so forth. So that's a really great example of one that you can do too. And then in terms of partnerships, another one, let's say, is say a fitness company. Um, if you're a gym, you could be partnering with basically every fitness company or athletic company or clothing company or food supplement. There's so many different ways that you can partner with different companies, right? In different industries. So really, I think the best answer to that question is it's a mindset thing. If you have that open mindset of, I want to collaborate, I want to partner, I want to do cool things with other businesses, you can honestly probably do it in, in almost any industry. And I agree with you. As long as you're creative, you're thinking outside the box, you're filling in gaps that provide value to your customer. Totally. That's the totally. bottom line. Like, for example, uh, yeah. a, a case, I guess a case study. Um, uh, I have a, a friend of mine, a video marketer. Now, small business obviously doesn't have the resources to have a massive, say, digital marketing firm. So instead yeah. of, a set of, you know, pumping in resources to do that, he partnered with a print company and he partnered with a digital marketing company and he was providing video marketing and they, right. they have a little hub all together and they, awesome. up, they upsell between each other. Right. And right. I think that's another great example uh, as well, but uh, yeah, that's good. Okay. Next question here for a small business owner starting out, what is content marketing and how would they get started? A little broad, but yeah, I guess as simple as simple as possible for that person that just heard about content marketing right now. Right. I just wanted to pause and I just wanted to say thank you for everyone for tuning in so far. Yes. Of everyone that's watching. I just thought, hey, I just wanted to give a shout out for everybody. If anybody has any questions for anything that I'm talking about or that you're curious about, feel free to put them in the comment section below. Absolutely. Um, but uh, in terms of content marketing, I think um, in today's day and age, you got to think of it. It's all of us are media companies. All of us have phones. We have computers in our pockets. Um, we can all create um, content. So um, the reality is, is how can a business owner, how can someone do content marketing? So the way that I like to say it is, is you need to find what you like doing, but also what is good for your business. So what is that? Is that writing blog posts? Is that doing videos? Is that doing live streams? Is that recording audio? Is that doing a podcast? Is What is it? 
And you might not know the answer right now, but the best way to find out is to test, right? Is to go out there and test, see what works for your audience. Don't go out this year in 2018 and say, I'm gonna start a podcast, okay, for my business. You go out and start a podcast, but really find out your industry, your customers, your followers, they don't like podcasts. They actually would rather take two minutes, watch a video. When instead you're wasting all this time and energy building a podcast when people don't even wanna watch your podcast or listen to your podcast. Very right? good point, yep. So, the reality is, is test out. Don't don't commit to something fully right away and be ready to pivot if it doesn't work. So always be testing is something to be to keep in mind when you're starting off content marketing. But the other thing is, is if you're like, hey, I'm gonna start a blog for my website, but you absolutely hate writing and you're bad at it, and it takes you three hours to write an article, should you really be writing a blog? No. If you do plan to if you do plan to create a blog, then you should be hiring someone else to do that for you that maybe enjoys doing that, that's good at it, right? And those are little simple things that I think a lot of people overlook when they get into content marketing. They're like, I'm going to start a YouTube channel, I'm going to do a blog, I'm going to do whatever, and they get just bogged down with just being a business and doing everything else that if you're testing and making sure that your audience and whatever content you're creating is effective, that is, I think, was most, most important. So just be testing and focus on um, when you do find what works, then focus on that. Double down on that. Double triple down, down on that. Yeah, yeah. And just keep going and focus on that rather than having this whole spectrum of everything, right? Agree. Agree with that. Now, I guess to, to I guess the next question goes hand in hand here. What What role do you think personal branding plays in landing a partnership as well so you have your content marketing how much of that should be you know personal branding does it play a big role yeah honestly so uh personal branding i think is super super important um today in, in today's day and age and the reason being is um i know you probably are going to uh, agree with this is we do business with people we like um, we follow people that we admire, that we want to be like, that we want to learn from. Um, and when we think about it, we value what our friends have to say. We value what our family has to say, what businesses to go to, what businesses not to go to, who to trust, who not to trust, right? So if you're able to create a personal brand alongside your business brand as a leader, whatever, it, it honestly doesn't even matter what your position is because if someone was to join us at Influensive today, having a big personal brand is a huge, huge differentiator from someone that doesn't, okay? Yeah, and the reason yeah. being is because as a business owner, if I'm hiring you or I'm bringing you onto my team, I'm gonna get access to you and your audience as well. That's a very, very valuable asset to me as a business owner um, mm -hmm. because I'm gonna get access to a wider audience. More people are gonna know about what I'm doing. They're gonna know more about what you're doing. They're gonna, what's the business and so on and so forth, and it's gonna help. So having that personal brand, I think, is important. And the reality is, is you got to do it correctly. And I think there's some people that do it wrong. And, you know, there's some people that do it effectively. And I think effectively, the right way to do it is just to be yourself. I think um, the most important thing is being yourself and being professional. Because the thing is, when I'm hiring someone today, too, what is, or I, and not even when I'm hiring someone, just think of it this way, is if someone tells you about a new product or a service, what is the first thing that basically 95% of us do? We go on Google and we Google it. We search it. Like, what is this? Who is this person? What do they do? Or what's this slime ball thing? Whatever it is. We go and Google it and we want to see what comes up. So think of it in your name sense. If I was to go Google your name, what am I going to find? Right? And if you're the leader of a company, okay, and I go and find nothing, that's just as bad as if I go and I find stuff that's bad about you or that it's not serious or it's not professional. So I think having yeah. a professional and effective personal brand is a super, super key in today's day and age. And it will continue to be more and more important as we move along because essentially we do business and we want to collaborate. We want to um, be in relationships with people that we like and that um, are similar to us or that we, um, you know, we believe in the same values. And I think when you have that alongside your business, you have a personal brand and your, and your business brand, that is a super, super important thing to have. And the last point that I'll say is 
when you're building a business as a CEO, as a founder, as a whatever, sometimes it is hard. You just get so bogged down with everything that you're doing in your business. You're like, oh, crap, I don't even put any, uh, any emphasis or um, importance on myself. But this is the way that you got to think of it and ask yourself this question is if my business was to die today, what do I have to start from tomorrow? Yeah. When you have a personal brand, let's say you have 6,000 people you're connected to on LinkedIn and you have 2,000 people on Twitter and you have 1,500 people on Facebook, you have a starting point rather than not a starting point. If your business was to die today and you go tomorrow and you're like, oh crap, I don't even have a LinkedIn. I don't even have, I've never even done an interview. I've never even, I don't have anything to pick up from, right? And that's where I think personal branding is so, so important um, to, in today's day and age and then just continue moving forward. That's a great, that's a very great point. Now, other than, so, so from, from a personal branding perspective, I know a lot of people at the gate, you know, writing, blogging. Yeah. That's, all, that's, that's my foundation. That's where I'm going to start. Are there, are there any other things that people could develop in order to help with personal branding? Or do you think that's a great starting point? Yeah, I think, I think creating content's a great starting point, right? Because we all have access to social media, I think. And when it comes to personal branding, I, I don't think personal branding is just social media. It's just social media is a tool that allows us to effectively um, share content, that effectively sure. allows us to um, share what we're doing, what we're up to, where we're traveling, um, what we believe in, what we don't believe in, what we like, what we don't like, right? It just makes it so easy. Facebook, you know, suggests stuff to us to like. So we like pages. And then when we start looking at websites, it suggests, you know, those ads for us. Like it just knows what we like and what we don't like, right? So it's, yeah. you got to think of it in that sense for your your potential customers or potential followers or people for your business. It's, you know, how can I get access to them? What are they going to like? And it's really about testing and, and, and figuring out what will work. But, but I think, yeah, blogging is a good way. But yet again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't start a blog or I wouldn't blog right now if you don't like writing. If, you, if, you don't, if it's not something that you're going to dedicate yourself to be good at and you want to be good at, may, you, there's many different ways. Like I said, use audio, use video. Um, you could do your, maybe you're more an in-person thing. Maybe you want to start a little mini show whatever it is. Um, there's so, so many find, different ways. find your strength and exploit it. Right. And then exactly. build off that. Right. And then basically once you strengthen what you're, well, once you exploit your strength, then off that, maybe you can hire a copywriter to help you edit your blogs, totally. get speaking opportunities, but start with what you're good at basically. Right. Totally. Totally. And that's honestly how I've, how I've done it too, is I kind of started um, writing, blogging. That's kind of how I um, kind of got into everything. And then from there it, it, it ballooned into, okay, um, I'm, uh, you know, a leader of uh, online publication, big platform. We have millions of followers. So um, people want to attach to that. And, you know, then speaking opportunities come out and then, you know, there's different advising and consulting type stuff. And then I know moving forward, I do want to get into more live stream stuff like this. And that's why one of the reasons why I wanted to do this is um, I haven't done a lot of live stream things. So that's why I was super, super pumped when, when yeah. you guys asked to, to, for me to be on because I haven't done enough of these. And it's something that I would love to do more of. Um, and, I, and I want to create more video content. I want to um, I just want to continue to create um, as much value as I can. I don't. I, I, I want to um, take the knowledge and everything that I've had in my experiences and being able to create content for others to, to hopefully it helps others. Hopefully it inspires others. Hopefully it um, shows that, you know, you can achieve things. It doesn't matter where you start from. Um, everyone has to start somewhere. So you might as well start right now and, and, and just kind of figure it out as you go. So, I agree. Um, yeah. Perfect. So last question um, your position on the current state of influence marketing and where do you see it going five years from now? Yeah. Influencer marketing honestly is still just beginning. <laughs> it's crazy to think, but it's still just beginning. I think, um, I think we're just starting to kind of get on the cusp of it a little bit. I think over the next two years, probably it's going to start hitting mainstream. Um, and it's something that I feel like a lot of business owners, and just businesses in general aren't taking advantage of enough. Um, and when, when you think of influencer marketing, you know, some people think, oh, only the people that have millions of followers or hundreds of thousands of followers, like all these super big people. When that's not just it. There's, there's a lot of value 
in having influencer marketing and, and think of it this way. Um, you could have an ambassador program, an online ambassador program, which could act as influencers online through social media for you and your business. So that's, that's a form of influencer marketing that I think is still relatively new that not a lot of people are, are taking advantage of. And it's something that I will be implementing in our businesses um, in the coming year um, to really take advantage of that. And it's, I'm not talking about the people that have millions of followers. I do know those people, but those aren't the only people that you know, is, needs to be a part of this. And I think um, whether you're a grocery store um, you know, a corner grocery store, family owned, or whether you are, um, you know, a logging company, let's say there's influencers out there. There's people yeah. that have audiences that you should be tapping into to get access to Enga and, and engaged and engaged audiences, right? Like for example, exactly. my, my biggest, my biggest thing is to, so you, you have someone with a thousand followers, but consistently yep. they're getting say on Instagram, for example, they're consistently getting a hundred, 200, 300 likes per post. Their engagement right. is very high compared to say exactly. someone with a hundred thousand followers is getting the same amount of likes. So really focus right. on that. It's more about the engagement than the actual follow. Totally. And that's, and that's what I think it is, is, is some people just get lost in the numbers. Right. And everyone's yeah. like, Oh, Oh, this person has so many and Oh, this company or whatever. And it's like, it's not really about the number. It's more about the engagement is a super, super important part. But I think I am I'm, I'm very big on influencer marketing. I think it's something that um, businesses should a hundred percent, being put on their radar for for branding, marketing, growth, sales, everything. Um, and think of it this way, is every employee or every team member for your company should be an influencer for your brand or for Agreed. your company that you're working for. So essentially, Agreed. do I think influencer marketing is just starting? Yeah, because I still don't think companies and corporations are enforcing it enough on their employees or on their team members to really represent their brand that they're working for or getting paid for. And Absolutely. once that once that becomes more um, kind of a, a standard thing in the industry, that's just going to explode it even more because, you know, the, the GEs and the, all these big massive Fortune 100 companies are going to have 20,000 ambassadors, 20,000 influencers that work for them that are, that are exploiting their brand and, and getting it out there. And that's huge. Yeah, that is massive. Well, this is perfect. I appreciate your time. Uh, yeah. the, way I end, the way I end every biz chats is with a rapid fire. Okay. So three, okay. three questions. The yeah. first answer that comes to the top of your mind. So uh -oh. what was, what was the last song you listened to? Last song I listened to. Oh crap. I was just in the car just this morning. I have no idea what the song was. Um, the radio Sing station it. was hot. Okay. Hot 107. I don't even know what it was. I can't even remember anymore. But this is that's a good one because I'm actually a, I, this is a little thing people probably don't know about me. But I I do like music. I do sing when I'm in the car. So <laughs> I do uh, long road trips uh, are are quite fun and entertaining. But uh, I don't have a good voice. But <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next question. What was the last movie you watched? Ooh, last movie Collateral. Um, older one. Yeah. Older one with Tom Cruise, Jamie Foxx. Really love that movie. Watched it over the weekend. Nice. And last one, what was the last book you read? Ooh, last book. I am reading, oh, what is it? Oh, Industries, Industries of the Future right now I'm reading, I think it's called. Oh, nice. Um, really cool. Uh, it basically it's, um, just talking about AI, blockchain, um, all the, just these really machine learnings, big data. Um, really, it's like a newer book within the last two months that I'm reading right now. Um, that's probably uh, the best answer, but yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is the end of Biz Chats. I want to thank you once again for taking your time to chat with, uh, with, with me and, and everyone that tuned in. Uh, thanks yeah. to Influ Influenza for the partnership and bringing this all together. Gotcha. Um, and next week, we'll be back with another expert guest to talk about another interesting topic. Um, and I guess my last plug is if you're interested in buying or selling a business, check out mybizon.com. Thank you, yeah. everyone. Have a good one, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot again. Nope. Appreciate it. Nope. No problem. Have a good one, Clinton. Cheers.